Oh, it says I'm live. Is that true? Am I really live? Hmm. All right. Well, say hello if I am live. I know I'm wiggling the camera. I'm trying to trying to figure out why it didn't do what I want. Ooh, what I wanted it to do. I'm putting it in the holder now. So say hi. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a heart. Do something. Let me know that you are watching. I'm going to just go ahead and try to get on with my computer so I can watch along with the rest of you and see if there are any comments. So, time snuck up on me. I was doing really well and I was very, very early and then I wasn't. So, I'm trying to find a stamp set for a sentiment tonight and I cannot find the one I wanted. So, Sheila is on. Hello, Sheila. There's a few others of you. Thank you. I'm glad you could join me for those of you that can join me live. And uh, how was your Friday? It was kind of wet and slushy here. Hi, Anne. It's very wet and slushy here in Southern Maine. Uh, and uh, I managed to do some shoveling today to get that slush before it turned to a thick piece of ice on some surfaces. So uh, I hope you had a, a great day. I mean, mine was great. I don't mind doing a little bit of shoveling and I didn't have to do a lot, so that was good. What else is new? Hey, I, I wanna tell you while we're waiting for everybody to jump on that I am working on my first ever overnight retreat. So we're gonna see how this goes, but I um, a couple people that I've spoken to have said that, hey, that would be great. I see people going on cruises, crafting cruises all the time, and you know I'm not gonna spend thousands of dollars to do that, but I'll go overnight somewhere. So I'm looking into places to go, and right now, if you wanna just sort of pencil in the date, I'm looking at around the April 19th and 20th range. So I don't know if we would go Thursday through Saturday, or if I would go Friday to Sunday, probably Friday to Sunday. Uh, it just really depends on the location that I can have it and what their kind of rules are. So I, I've put out one feeler today and I meant to do another one, but I just didn't have the time. So I, I think that's gonna be a lot of fun, just kind of getting away and, um, and, and crafting together. So some of it will be, you know, led by me. Uh, I have plans for make and takes and, you know, a game like either bingo or if we have enough people, bunko, because that's fun. Uh, and just some prizes, swag bag, all that stuff. So I'm really excited about planning that. And uh, I hope that you are as well. But let's go ahead and I'm going to turn you guys down. Uh, actually, I think, yeah, I think I can turn you down. Hold on, and we're gonna get started. All right, I'm gonna, it's gonna get messy for a second. All right, there we go. Got my little table going on here. So we're gonna try something a little bit new tonight. And that is usually we stamp, uh, when we have line art stamp, which are, are stamps that you stamp in and then you color in. Usually we stamp on a light color and then color in with darker colors. So we stamp on white maybe, and then we color in with all sorts of colors. Well, this time we're gonna stamp on something darker and then color with lighter. And I'm sure some of you are wondering how that's possible because it's hard to add light color to dark, but it's not always hard. I'm gonna begin with a piece of Misty Moonlight cardstock. And let's go ahead and we're going to cut half a sheet and I'll score that at four and a quarter. So there's our card base that we won't need for a little bit. And then I'm going to take this and quarter it. And it's bigger than I need it to be, but that's... Um, kind of intent, well, no, you know, I'm gonna cut this down. Second thought, I'm gonna cut it down to four by five and a quarter, which is what I want my end result to be. And if I mess up, I can always cut this down a little bit more. All right, so I'm gonna put my paper trimmer aside here. 
And if you saw my little tease on Facebook, we're going to be using a new background stamp, or I don't even know if they call them background stamps still. Um, but it's this doggone friendly stamp. It is a huge stamp. Takes the big block here to use it. Although you can get around having a big block for this. I mean, I do like the substantial nature of the block. But you can just put the rubber side up and work. It's just so close to your, you know, your, your station that I don't really like doing that. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to take... Now I'm using Misty Moonlight here, so I'm going to take an ink that's a, that's a bit darker. I could use Misty Moonlight also, but I'm going to use a darker ink. I'm going to use Night of Navy. And because this is such a large stamp, and let me put it right side up here, uh, I'm going to have it face up, and I'm going to ink it this way. Just tap, tap, tap. So that's pretty evenly inked. All right, I'm gonna get that out of my way before I put my fingers in it. So now I'm gonna bring in my Misty Moonlight piece and I'm gonna put it right down over those dogs. And then I'm gonna protect my fingers because I didn't before and you can see what happens when you don't. I'm just going to rub over the top. Now, another way that you can ink up these background stamps and get a nice, um, a nice even coating of ink is to use a brayer. There's one in the new mini catalog. I do find that this works just fine. And see, there we have our little dogs in blue. Now, when I'm cleaning this, let me show you. We have two different, Stamp Up carries two different types of stamp cleaner. You've got, you've got this stamp and scrub where you put a little of the spray on here and you wipe it down and then you um, wash it over here. But this stamp is really quite large. So it's a, little, it's a little cumbersome to do that. The other method of cleaning stamps is the chamois. Now mine is, is well loved, so it's, it's not looking clean, but it still works. And it's wet with water, so it, I'm just using water to clean this up. I'm just rubbing on my stamp. And it does a really good job of cleaning, especially these stamps that have a lot, um, you know, you can get into the crevices. I mean, that's what I love about my stamp and scrub too. I can get into the crevices, but I have good control because my fingers are, are telling this where to go. All right, and so then it's clean and ready to use again. Now, if you have one of these chamois, um, it's not so bad in the winter, but in the summer, if you close it up, like this is just an extra stamp case, but if you close it up, sometimes they can mildew if it's really, really warm and humid. But what I do is the stamp case, I've cut out these ends. So if I look at a normal stamp case, you've got these little tabs here that kind of close the ends. So I just cut those off to give some, some more airflow in there. You can see that there's just a, I think you can see just a tiny hole there and, and one down here. Look, I got, I got ink in, ooh. Gotta watch where I'm rubbing my fingers, I guess. All right. Um, so, and then the other thing is you can just not close it all the way. When this dries, it may curl a little bit and it's going to get very, very hard, but to replenish it, you just rinse it with water. You can, um, I usually just rinse it out with water after it's, you know, seen a, a bunch of ink and it'll be ready to go the next time, but you can put them in like the washer with some dark towels or something and they'll come out pretty clean too. I haven't tried that yet. I'm going to have to do that. See how it works. All right back to our project so now we have this which it actually looks nice just the way it is i think oh i have so much blue ink on me oh it's ridiculous ridiculous i'm going to bring in watercolor pencils now stand up carries two different assortments this is the what they would probably consider is the main one it's got a white and a black in it and then some other colors and this one doesn't have a white or a black mm. No, I guess it does have a black. Uh, 
nope, that's a Knight of Navy. Um, so it tells you the colors on the back. Sometimes they are stamping up colors and sometimes they're not. Like for instance, this blue just says blue. The rest of them look like they are stamping up colors, uh, except for this blue. Blue is just generic over here. All the rest of them are stamping up colors though. So I'm, I'm gonna bring in just this one right here. Now these are watercolor pencils. You can color with them just like you do with colored pencils or you can afterwards you can kind of blend with them as well. I'm going to show you both so you can kind of choose which you like better. Um, let me see here. So I'm gonna, I'm looking for my, my kind of sample because it's easier on my eyes if I look for my sample, but I can't find it. So we'll just start back from scratch. I'm gonna find some parts in here of dogs where I think it might be white on them. So up here on this St. Bernard, I'm just gonna add some white right in here to his jowls and up along his forehead. So it just adds a little bit of subtle color. Well, technically white's not a color. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this little sheep dog. I think this guy is so cute. Now there are so many breeds of dogs represented in this single stamp. Let me know in the comments what kind of dog, if any, you have. I do have a dog and um, she's a mutt, so, but she's probably a cross between this one, which looks something like a chow, and this one, which looks, I don't know, maybe like a husky, I don't know. But again, I'm gonna find ones that I think have white spaces on them, and I'm just gonna, gonna add some white to them. Let's see. Oh, this guy over here has a little, looks like a stripe up here, but do I, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. We'll, we'll put some white on him up here. I don't know which parts of them are white and which aren't. It's just color his whole head. Maybe he's just a white dog, I don't know. All right, let's see, what other ones are gonna be white? Oh, how about this little Pomeranian guy? He's probably got some white on him, right? Look, she's even got a bow in her hair. It's kind of cute. And you can make this darker or lighter depending on the pressure that you use. Look, a little, little ponytail for that little puppy dog. All right. And let's see, you know what, I bet this little, mm, looks like maybe uh, some kind of doodle. Doodle or poodle. Now rumor has it, I just read this today, rumor has it that these dog breeds are dogs, or these are representative of dogs of Stampin' Up! employees. I mean, I would guess that's probably true, right? Is there's a lot of Stampin' Up! employees and they probably have a lot of dogs of all different kinds. So again, mine is a mutt and nobody really knows, not even a vet. He had no idea what my, my dog was. Um, we think that she's got some sort of, um, some sort of, shepherd of some, you know, some kind of shepherd in her. Uh, she's definitely got an undercoat. It drives me nuts because that undercoat is, I mean, she just sheds all the time. She went to the groomer and she kept shedding and shedding and shedding. Um, not quite as bad. So she is going to get regular grooming. First time in my life I've ever had a dog groomed and it won't be the last. She felt so much better too. All right, so any other dogs in here? Let's, um, let's, let's hold off on that. So now what we can also do is bring in some other colors. I'm gonna bring in this um, Fresh Freesia and let's give this dog a bandana of Fresh Freesia. So we're not coloring a ton, 
just some little spots here, here and there. And what else can we do? We could maybe add in, um, there's another color right here. We can add a little bow to this princess dot here. And let's see, we've got, um, oh, I'm gonna cover this thing up, so I'm not gonna spend much time over there. We've got a little bone over here. So maybe we bring in the brown and we color in the bone. That's a little dark for me for a bone, so I'm gonna add a little white afterwards. And just lightens it up a little bit. There we go. And this one's got a rope. Maybe I add a little bit of gray for the rope. Gray might not show up very well. Because it's so close to the blue. Um, let's put a little gray on this little medallion here. So we've just got a little bit of color in there. Now, if you wanted to make this more of a watercolor look, you will need your blender pens or your water painters. Uh, for these small areas, I think I prefer the blender pen. And I'm just gonna show you that you just sort of add the water here and it will dry and it will blend a little bit better. Um, Right now it looks blue, but it's because it's wet and it's soaking into the paper. But honestly, it, you don't need to do that here. I like the look of it, um, and especially since it's fur, it looks a little bit rougher if you don't blend it. So I think it looks a little bit more realistic if you don't blend it. So that's what we've got for that. And then we would just adhere that onto the front of this card. Let's see, let's, um, I don't know actually if I want to adhere it with dimensionals or just flat yet. So I don't really know what I'm doing. This is as far as I got with what I wanted to do. I got the idea from a fellow demonstrator, Mary Deathridge, and, and uh, but now I don't really know what I want to do with it. So I brought in some other things. So we have some vellum basics paper, and the vellum basics have three different um, patterns already into the vellum. So there's some leaves, there's some polka dots, and then there's some stripes. I think, let's do this, let's do the polka dots. Let's go ahead and punch using this uh, decorative circle punch. By the way, bad news, the hexagon punch and the oval punch, the oval punch that goes with this stamp set, are on back order till April. Yeah, I know, April, ooh. So I love this little, I mean, come on, who does not love a golden retriever? So I cannot cover up his face a little bit. So this is gonna go off the edge, and that's okay with me, because, because I'd, rather, I'd rather see this golden's face. Now remember, when you're dealing with vellum, you do not want to, um, you don't want to have it, um, oops, I, I went too far over with my thing. What you don't want to do is you don't want to have it in a place where it's gonna show. And I don't, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover up this area right here. So what are we gonna do? We, I'm gonna bring in some paper. Now I'm just gonna stamp a sentiment so we can probably have a sentiment come in like this. But I need a short sentiment. So let's see, what what do we got going on here? I found a, I found a stamp set right before we came on. Uh, let's do layering leaves. Let me see, I think this set is actually larger letters than I, really want or need them to be. So hello is not gonna work. You know what, I do have another set with a smaller hello. Let's see about for you. Mm, that might work. Let's see if this works. If it doesn't work, 
we can just start over and do something else. I'm not opposed to that. They bring back my Knight of Navy ink. And of course I could use um, Misty Moonlight. I'm gonna maybe just plop that down right there. All right. And let me get my scissors out. I'm gonna flag the end. So I'm gonna cut down what I think is the middle. And then from one point, I'll cut to where I just stopped cutting or thereabouts. And from the other point, there we go. So we have something that looks like this. That's gonna work, I think. That's gonna work for me. Yeah. I'm gonna just put a little bit of glue in here. Now what I could also do, well, before I put that down, I could bring in some ribbon. And I've got this, um, let me see what, what it's called. I had the scrap piece, um, and this is the Knight of Navy bordered ribbon. It's really weird, because on one side it's got the color Knight of Navy, and on the other side it tells you what kind of ribbon it is, bordered ribbon. So weird. So weird that they have it split up like that. So I could maybe put a little piece down here. That's very close to that color of the cardstock, though. I don't think it's going to work for me. But you could do something like this and have it. No, I don't like that. Bye-bye. See you later. So maybe you're just doing something like this. It goes out to the edges. Press that down there. And now I'm going to flip this over. I'm just going to trim off this using the edge of the card as my guide. Oops, it got into the card a little bit. That's all right. So we have something that looks like that. And now we can put this right up here. This would make a really nice sympathy card, I think. Um, for somebody that's lost a dog, but it's also just a nice thinking of you card and just a hello card because these dogs, you know, most of them look pretty happy. You know how some dogs just don't ever look happy, but there are other dogs like mine who just can't look unhappy. She's not. She's a good dog. She, we had a rough start with that dog. She ate three pairs of my prescription glasses. Sharon, why don't you take care of your glasses? Well, it's not like I left them or, well, I did leave them a little bit, but for instance, I fell asleep on the couch with my glasses right next to my face. So my head's on the pillow and it's right there on the couch next to my face. And when she was a puppy, she ate them while I was asleep. Like, that is a bold move. Fortunately, I had learned by that time, because that was my third pair that she got, I had, I had learned to get uh, insurance. So that was money well spent for those glasses. So there we go. We've got, we've, we've got that. And we could just put in, um, we could just find some gems to put in here. Let's see what we have for gems around here. I know I have somewhere, somewhere I have some in color. Yeah. So I've got these, these in colors, the 2023, 2025 in color dots. And so, this is actually two packages mixed together, I think. So, ooh, I haven't used much of the blue at all. Probably because I'm saving it, like we do with uh, DSP, you know? You save it for using it well. All right, that doesn't want to come up, so we'll use this end. I 
can just do that. Something like that. Something simple. It doesn't have to be much. So that's a pretty quick card, don't you? Don't you think? And then all we have to do is put something on the inside. Now let me show you a trick for the inside. Well, I hope I'm going to show you a trick for the inside. I haven't actually tried it yet. Um, but it shouldn't be hard. I'm going to just need another scrap. Um, I need my paper trimmer, which is somewhere here. Right here. I'm going to cut a piece that's four by five and a quarter for the inside. So what I can do, uh, I shouldn't have cleaned my stamp. Oh well, we can clean it again. So maybe I'm going to highlight one of these dogs. I, I really think this dog down here with the little tie is adorable. So I'm just going to ink him up, just, just concentrating on him. I don't have to ink the whole stamp. my paper right there all right so there's my little doggy and I can now he's on a corner so I can fussy cut him everybody's favorite I'm pretty sure that I have converted team member Stacy into a fussy cutter I'm pretty sure I did she's going to be doing the demo doing one of the demonstrations at my team meeting on the 5th. And so she sent me what she was thinking, which she didn't have to do, by the way. She can do whatever she wants to do. Um, and I noticed that she had fussy cut. Oh, well, she mentioned it. Even though it was something that had dyes, which I thought was hilarious. So I just need to take one more little area out. So right now there is a special to join Stampin' Up. You can be part of my team, just like a lot of, a lot of my customers just joined my team, not because they want to sell Stampin' Up, but because they want a good deal on their stamps. So now we can just put him right down there because see, he, he had um, the edges were already part of him. So that looks cute. He's just making a little appearance down here in the front. So anyways, the, the special right now is you can um, do the $99 starter kit. Normally you get $125 worth of merchandise but for January and February during celebration, you can either get the $125 worth of merchandise and a Stampin' Glass Mat Studio, which looks like this beautiful thing. It's just, it's a big piece of glass that you can work on. It makes for good stamping, except for when you're trying to film on camera because the glare from the, the lights show up on camera so much. Um, that's a $60 value, and it's only only available for demonstrators or people that sign up right now. I got one because they allowed current demonstrators to pre-order one for a certain time period, and then they saved the rest for people that sign up. Um, the other option is if you don't want or need a Stampin' Glass Mat Studio, you can get an extra $30 worth of merchandise. So you can get $155 worth of Stampin' Up! merchandise for only $99. And you get the bonus of free shipping, which also saves you an extra, you know, I don't know, $16, $17. So, so there is our card. Pretty cute, I think, huh? What do you think? Give me a thumbs up, a heart, something. Let me know what you think about that. Um, so tomorrow I'm going to be releasing... Um, the my February 
class stamp it's a mini stamp camp i wouldn't call it a really uh, full-on stamp camp but it's going to be featuring the trusty tools especially since we've got this paper to go with it and this paper is a stampin up celebration paper so it's only available with a 50 dollars purchase um, but i have a couple packs and you're going to get a half a pack with that stamp mini stamp camp uh, it might just be a regular class. We'll see. We'll see how many projects I come up with. But that's going to be in February and be watching for tomorrow for the exact dates. Hey, instead of talking to my desk, why don't I turn you guys around? Yeah, there I am. And uh, so I hope you'll be able to join me for that. It's uh, lots of fun just kind of getting together and creating. And these trusty tools will make... Uh, great cards for anybody that's handy. Now, for those of you, who, some of you know, because you work with me or you attend Curtis Lake Church with me, I, I am the executive administrator there, but I've recently taken over some uh, facility care roles, which not really my gig, but I can, I can administrate, I guess. So, um, so I have now a facilities team of trustees that uh, we're going to get our building in great shape. But I thought, oh, this is going to be great because they're all handy. And so I can send them thank you cards. So it makes great, great, uh, you know, you've got handy men in your life or handy women, because some girls like tools too, uh, then you, uh, you won't want to miss this class. And because it's a stamp set and dies that go along with it as well, you can paint the tools pink because, you know, there are companies that make a whole lot of line of pink tools. So anyway, stay tuned for that. And I will see you later. And don't forget, kind of pencil in, in the around the April 19th, April 20th uh, for a retreat. I hope you can make it. Have a great weekend, everybody. We will see you next time. Oh, see you on Sunday for my Valentine series. Bye.